with you this morning. The text this morning is a text that we read. It's Psalm 39, 4 through 7. But before we get to that, I would like you to give a little thought to hope today. Imagine your life is a cardboard box. And I shared some of the things that happened and are happening in my life and some of its emptiness. And as we gave thanks verbally last Sunday, I'd like to just take a minute, uh, a quiet moment, and think of two aspects of hope in your life. First aspect of hope is, what are you in need of? The outside of the box. What is in need of forgiving? What is in need of redeeming? Uh, What is in need of fulfilling? The second aspect is the, the we have hope for others. It's the blessings that God blesses us with so we can overflow to others. What is your hope for God's blessing to you so that you can be a blessing to others? What are those needs around you that the Holy Spirit just may be tapping you on the shoulder saying, go and be a blessing this week? Let's just take a quiet moment and think of those things in your own hope box this morning. Lord, we come to you this morning in need. We've lifted up the needs of others around us. Lord, we've been silent in recognizing the needs before us. We do have hope, God. Not necessary that the needs were to be immediately fulfilled, but God, that you have something greater in store. God, we recognize the needs of others around us. And we have hope that our lives, as marred as they are, as unfulfilled as we feel, God, that you will use us for your glory in the lives of others. So God, today, in this world We pray for hope. Not wishful thinking, but God knowing that you will bless. We pray, amen. Well, the text, Psalm 39, 4 through 7. Show me, Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. In your sight, my lifetime seems nothing. Indeed, everything is no more than a puff of wind, no more than a shadow. All we do is for nothing. We gather wealth, but don't know who will get it in the end. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Don't we long to know the future? The first two words, show me. Show me. Oh, I want to know. What is the end of my days? What, is, what, is, what tomorrow is going to bring? Will we get COVID next relief next month or next year or never? Do we have to endure this for the rest of our lives? We long for a peek into the future. And uh, I don't know if you guys are horoscope readers or not, but I just have this issue with horoscope. There's, there's 7 billion people in this world. Okay? And if you read your horoscope for today, there's 12 signs of the zodiac. So if you read your horoscope for your sign of the zodiac, you're one of about 600 million people that have the same horoscope today. One in 600 million uh, on the earth today. Okay? I mean, how personal is that? One in 600 million have the same horoscope for today. 
Oh, God has made us so much greater than that, hasn't he? Oh, why not go to God today and say, God, what do you have for me today? And we're going to get a unique, divine revelation as to what he's created you for. So just, if you like reading that stuff, great. But, but read it for what it's worth. You know, you're one of 600 million. Oh, no, no, no. You're one of a kind. But we long for that peak in the future. That's why it's written in every newspaper, the horoscope for the day. Whoa, i got to read my horoscope. Oh, we want to know that something waits. We want some instruction and some guidance for tomorrow, not just today. We want some redemption, some justice, some healing, some peace, some knowledge, some insight. And because today is pretty overwhelming, why else would we turn to a horoscope that's the same of one in 600 million others? And it's pretty ugly. It's pretty ugly. Oh, we shared things that are going on in our lives and we're not all able to meet and worship. And oh, we have people at home and they can't worship because their TVs don't have YouTube on them so they can watch worship together. And hope is something that's more than wishful thinking. Hope is the knowledge that God is going to intervene. I just wish tomorrow would be different. Now, we have hope that God will redeem whatever it is we're going through. So show me, Lord. Show me, Lord, not this world, not the horoscope, not if we look at the past and we learn from history. No, we don't learn from history. We do the same thing over and over and over again. Show me, Lord, God, what do you have in plans. Through God's eyes, we long to see the future. Through God's eyes, as the young men are going through Ecclesiastes, it's just a perfect parallel with this, all is vanity without God. It's like the water cycle. It rains, it runs off the Leaf River, goes down to the Mississippi, Gulf of Mexico, evaporates, you know. We get the, the warm weather pattern, comes north, clouds form, it rains, goes down, the, it goes over and over and over and over again. But not for eternity. See, that's where God has intervened into the processes of this world. God has created it, sin has destroyed it, and God will redeem it. And not just some day, your, your, way, your direction, down in the future down there. But God can redeem it today and tomorrow and the day after that. God's redemption isn't just a someday down the future. Show me, Lord. And God has responded to our cry. God himself, our creator, the Lord Almighty, the Lord ever-present, the Lord all-knowing. And he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Not one of these Ecclesiastes wisdom things, but this is a promise from God. I will not leave you. I'll never forsake you. The box still looks pretty ugly. But I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. So there's this aspect of hope that we can come before our Creator and our Redeemer and ask, ask life's difficult questions. And the psalmist continues, Lord, show me my life's end and the number of my days. These are two different things. Show me my life's end and the number of my days. So let's life's end here. Life's end could be my final destiny. God, show me what this box is going to be at the end of the world. I don't think that's what the psalmist is talking about. Really, is a psalmist really asking, what's my final disposition? Is it heaven or is it hell? See, I think the author in Psalms had this assurance. He's coming to God. He knew who God was. I don't think he's asking about my life's end. You know, what's my final disposition? So the psalmist could be saying, how is my life going to end? Is it going to be... A Mack truck running over my cardboard box on 160th Street? Show me how I'm going to die, God. 
That could be what the psalmist is asking, but that seems so unfulfilling, doesn't it? It's kind of soothsayer, crystal ballish kind of stuff. Show me how I'm going to die. To be honest, I think I'd be avoiding 160th Street and Mack trucks for the rest of my life. I don't think it would draw me any closer to God. What could show me my life's end mean? If you ever run a race, how do you know you're done? There's a finish line. Show me my life's end could be, what am I doing this for, God? It could be, what is my purpose, God? What have you created me to be? Show me my life's purpose. What is all this for? Just give me a little glimpse, God, of the purpose of my pretty ugly box. Hope that God will redeem what's going on in my life today and who I am and all my sinfulness and all my emptiness. And God, how are you going to use that? Not just the final finish line, but all the little finish lines between here and then. God, show me my life's end when I go to bed tonight. God, what are you going to do in me tomorrow and the next day and the week after and the month after that? Show me, Lord, the blessings or at least the possible blessings that could come from my short existence on this earth. Because knowing God and that he has a purpose for our life, oh, that motivates me to pray more, to worship more fervently, to serve a little more heartily, to hope a little more confidently. Show me my life's end. Show me my purpose, God. And show me the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting this life is. Because if show me my life's end is my purpose, then and show me the number of my days says, I had better get this done. Because my time on here is limited. A woman's work is never done. There's not enough hours in the day. Time flies. How fleeting life is, the psalmist says. We have a limited number of minutes in our life in which God can work through us. I think this is the psalmist's heart here this morning. Our earthly existence is very short. God, use me as you would. How short is our life? How many generations since Adam? If you're a new creation person, 76 generations listed between Adam and Jesus, add another 60 or 70 between Jesus and now. If you're a old earth creationist, humanity came on earth about 200,000 years ago. You do the math, whether a generation is 40, 50, or 60 years, how many generations there are. But there aren't many generations, no matter how you look at creation, old earth or new earth. One can read this as a real downer, couldn't you? Whew. Thelma Eden was buried yesterday. I think 90-some years old, relatively long span. But in the span of creation, in the span of humanity on this earth, just a little, just a little bit. But if the psalmist is saying, show me my end, show me my purpose, and remind me of how few days I have then we read this as an encouragement to go and serve the Lord. Yes, I'm the eternal optimist. And then the psalmist does this. He compares our short existence to that of God's. In your sight, God, my lifetime seems as nothing. In your sight, God, in God's view, my life seems like nothing. That's our perspective. And God's perspective is, we are so precious that he's willing to redeem 
every aspect of our life. That's how great we are in God's eyes. But for us, we're a puff of wind. We're no more than a shadow. We are nothing. All we do is for nothing. We gather wealth, and when we die, someone else gets it, the psalmist writes. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? What do we wait for? What's left? There's only God. There's only the Lord. If all we do is for nothing, our span of life is relatively nothing, any gain is eventually lost. Is it all for naught? Is this all fruitless? Or does there exist something that can make something out of our nothingness? Is there a being that has been trying to tell us that we are precious and special? Is there a power that can use us for purposes beyond our existence? And we say, yes, yes there is. There is, that's why we're here worshiping the God that we love. We look to God for those answers, these hard answers and these questions about our existence. This is real. Real questions that we deal with and the psalmist dealt with 4,000 years ago. Our fleeting purpose, those moments when we have unmet longings, when we turn to God and cry with our heart, God is all this for nothing. Dottie can't even be here on the first Sunday of Advent when she was here decorating Wednesday night. Oh, God, was all that for nothing? Is she sitting at home saying, will I ever even be able to walk into the church during Christmas season? We don't know. And so we cry out, God, Adonai, what do I wait for? Our hope is in you. We have hope. We don't have a wish list, but we have a hope list. You created and you sat here in the quietness of this morning. You created a hope list. I hope you did. Because all that we do, all that we are, all that we suffer, all that we endure has a purpose in God's eyes. We can't see that. All that we do is for nothing. But we have hope that God has a purpose for all this. That our cardboard boxes are redeemable. Master of Divinity, Pastor Scott, speeding tickets, lying, stealing, cheating. Those are the little ones on the list, folks. God has a person has has a purpose for this sinful person and this sinful life, this broken life. For it is God who has come to us with the assurance before we ever cried that question. It's God who came to us first before we ever cried the question. He came to us in Genesis one in the Garden of Eden. He walked with them in the garden. It is God who came to Moses in that burning bush and said, Moses, I know you don't talk so good and you're going to ask about seven times to be delivered from this, but I'm still calling you to lead the people out of Egypt. It was God who came to us in the person of Jesus Christ. I will show you how much I love you and how precious you are. It is God who has come to us in the person of the Holy Spirit now today. Say, not only do I love you and do I care for you, but I'm going to live in you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. All that God does in us is really something. When all that we do on our own is really nothing. Say it again. All that God does in us is really something. If we do it without God, 
it's really nothing. So this morning, it's a week of hope. Let us take our hope lists and not just pray a little harder and work a little harder or serve a little more diligently. Not that those are bad things to do, but really give them to God. Because all that we do is nothing. We've got to let God do the redeeming. Show me, Lord, the end of my days. Show me, Lord, the number of my days. And when we give that hope list to God, the Lord God Almighty, Adonai is the word here in the psalmist's the creator and the redeemer of our lives, when we truly give it to him and our children's lives and our brothers and our sisters' lives, he takes it and blesses it now and forevermore. Let him redeem your hope list today. Let him bless your hope list this week. Let him take ownership of that hope list. Don't hang on to it, but give it to him today. Let God come down and bring hope into our Christmas. Let us pray. God, we come to you this morning clinging to our hope lists. Lord, sometimes it's just a wish and we try and try on our own and it remains just a wish. But God, this morning and this week, we pray that you help us to give the list to you. Lord, to come to you confidently, not that we'll get an answer tomorrow, but Lord, we come in hope in hope that you will take all the circumstances in our lives and in the lives of our family and our friends and our neighbors, and God, that you will redeem them. God, that you will use them for your purposes. So, Lord, that the sufferings that we endure today, the longings that we have in our heart right now, God, we give them to you this morning. We lay them at your feet and we pray, God, bless them. That is our hope. That you will use our circumstances and we, your people, Lord, to redeem and bless this world. God, help us do that this week. And we can only do that by the power of your Holy Spirit in us. We can only do that by coming to your feet this morning. God, by laying all those things that we are clinging to Lord, and letting them go. God, humbling ourselves, saying to you, God, we can't do this. God, I've been trying to do this for years and years. Lord, I've had this thrust upon me this week, and it's just one more thing that I can't handle. Lord, would you take it? And would you bless it? Lord, this is our hope. That through your power and through your love, and through your forgiveness and your redemption, those things have purpose in your world. So come, Lord Jesus, with hope in our lives. We ask and we pray by the power of that Holy Spirit in us and in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.